please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. A very good morning. Welcome to Chart Busters, the show we're going to highlight all the buzzing stocks of the day, also get you some expert advice on how you can capitalize and trade. It was a bit of a rocky start to the session. The Nifty has recovered those losses, though. Good to see we're up closer around 30 points. The mid-cap index as well. Remember, it's down closer around 4% from the highs that we saw on Monday. That as well has recovered. So fair to say, Mangalam, that the Nifty has done its bit. The Indian markets have done its bit. Uh, over to South Africa for in the afternoon. Let's see whether or not the Indians can pull off a surprise. We have to do that because uh, if the mid-cap index is something to go by, maybe the tail maybe. wags. Let's it, is, it is the midday of the week, you know, Nigel, but two things really stand out. You know, ahead of the weekend, we usually talk about those SIN stocks moving higher. That's terrible. Uh, <laughs> ITC, that one's moved higher. Results on Friday, so we'll keep an eye out on that. Smoking hot at uh, the high point of the day. If you take a look at the other stocks, though, some people are saying, no, we still have two days to go for the weekend. So let's go by and have some coffee. Coffee day enterprises should come up for you. That one spiked. And how? That one is trading at 350 rupees. Remember, two days, two years since it's crossed its IPO I, price. And there it has seen a bit of a flare. I think people are doing a lot of coffee, actually, in 2018. If you put a pull up a year-to-day chart, you'll mm -hmm. see that the stock that didn't move much in the last one year or a couple of years. In fact, the stock has given you closer to around 50% returns or thereabouts. In the last 12 months, it's given you 78%. But just that last, the final part of that graph is telling you the big, big returns have come at the end. I don't know if they're having coffee or they're having Irish coffee. Because if you take a look at the whiskey <laughs> stocks, Radico Khetan should come up for you. 78% in coffee day. Uh, the last one year, Radico Khetan is up 177%. And this year itself, that one is up almost 14%. But all that and more in the next half an hour. First up, all the top stories that we're tracking at this point in time. The bond bears run for cover after the government trims additional borrowing requirement to 20,000 rupees. Uh, rupees 20,000 crores from the earlier announced 50,000 crore. Bond yields is boosting all the public sector banks higher in trade. And ID stocks continue to cushion the correction in the markets. The Nifty IT index trades up close around a percent with strong buying seen in large IT stocks. The Nifty IT index, remember, has gained close to around 12% in the last one month. And in fact, in the last one year, it's up close to 30%. The mid-cap mid stocks, they continue to reel under a bit of pressure. The stocks correct for the third day in a row. Despite some recovery, they are underperforming. High beta, power and infra stocks, they take it on the chin. And in key earnings to watch out for today, Hindustan Unilever is expected to report a good quarter, while no surprises are, are expected from Bharti Infratel. On the other hand, a CNBC TV team poll sees a 50% jump in the net profit for Z Entertainment, all three stocks trading mildly in the red. All right, then let's take a look at the markets. We have seen a fair amount of recovery. The Nifty is virtually at the high point of the day. A couple of stocks which are taking it higher. Of course, we spoke about ITC Coal India. Had been underperforming this week, in fact, had a good start to this year. Now that one's moving higher again, closer to that 294 levels. And we have ONGC2 moving to the high point of the day. So let's get in a good technical check as far as the markets are concerned. Ashwini, just a couple of hours ago when we opened in the red and we were virtually at the low point of the day, you suggested one should go long. And uh, boy, what kind of money one is making on the indices. Do you think this long trade continues? What's the upside or do you think it's time to take some money home? You know, we seem to be making money only when democracy is in danger. <laughs> <laughs> so each time there is a bad news and you get a collapse, if you buy, uh, you are able to make money. Now, the good thing today is that we had that sharp decline, which has now gotten shorts in place. So the market can rally all day long and, you know, the shorts will keep supporting it. So that way, if you went long in the morning, still continue to hold. I don't think uh, it's over as yet. Particularly on the banks, I think more short covering uh, will come in. As far as other stocks are concerned, I think at some point, all mid caps are also getting into the green now as we speak. Mm. So TV today is a buy with a stop of 458, target of 480. Ultratech is a buy with a stop of 4550, target of 4700. And Tata Steel is a buy with a stop of 764, target of 790. Well, Ashwini, you've got a couple of days uh, to the weekend, but Mangalam and we were just talking about coffee day. That stock suddenly has woken up. Uh, is it, uh, you know, it does, is it looking good for more? Because I think in the last one month or so, it's moved uh, 100 bucks odd. See, the simple 
logic is that once something crosses the listing high, mm. then everybody is making money and supply suddenly dries up because mm -hmm. nobody wants to sell a winner. Mm. Yeah. So uh, chances are it's begun, you know, some sort of a strong rally which could take it up to 500, 550. So today is a continuation of that previous rally. So people can still uh, take long positions on uh, coffee day. All right, Ashwini, you know, GNFC is the stock that should come up uh, on the screen right now. It's recovered about 6-7% from the low point of the day. Yesterday had a bad day. There were reports that today the hedge plant, the TDI plant, that is shut. So because of which we saw some pummeling on the stock, some bit of recovery seen from the low point of today's trading session. GNFC, what is your view, Ashwini? See, fertilizer overall is doing well. Hmm. Now, if uh, GNFC has uh, specific issues, I don't think company is closing down. Okay, fine, fire, etc., whatever. I would think it's a good time to buy because, uh, you know, Chambal is doing well. Uh, budget generally, uh, you know, this period is good for fertilizer. So if I have to buy, I would buy here, maybe keep a uh, 470, 475 type of stop. And at some point, it will go back and test previous highs because these are all, you know, temporary events. They get priced in and market moves on. Okay, all right, uh, Ashwini, thanks so much for stopping by and, in fact, giving us uh, your quick take on the markets. By the way, if you're talking about GNFC, then obviously, mm. as we always spot, keep an eye out on GSFC. Remember, that stock holds roughly around 20% stake in GNFC, and, uh, you know, they normally move in tandem. So, your GNFC has moved higher. That means that GSFC as well, because it has a stake in this company, among various other companies, that one as well is moving higher, both of them recovering from the low point of the day. Absolutely, but let's talk about some primary market action then. We have Amber Enterprises. The IPO kicks off today. Price band set at 8.55 to 8.59 cro uh, 8 rupees a share. Yesterday we saw uh, anchor book allocation as well. So has a decent anchor book allocation at uh, the higher end of the price band. We have Mr. Jasbir Singh, the chairman of the company, joining us now. Thanks a lot, Mr. Singh, for joining in. A lot of excitement, as we can see, as far as your issue is concerned. Thank Just you. one thing. Um, what is the mix between your OEM, which is your uh, 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 original equipment manufacturing, and ODM, original design manufacturing in uh, the kind of components that you make for ACs? And how does that differ in uh, the pricing and margins? So we have uh, we are a large ODM player. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, it's 72% uh, is ODM category and remaining is OEM category. And uh, uh, that, that's, that's the split currently into the complete revenue split. All right, uh, Mr. Singh, you know, welcome, first of all. Uh, we're looking forward to interacting with you more often as well. Uh, I was just looking at your business model, and that's quite encouraging. I think 72% comes from the ODM, uh, you know, a segment of your business. But you're raising this money basically to, you know, pay off all those uh, loans and, in fact, be virtually debt-free if we that's get right. that right. Yeah. So I think yeah. the current debt in your books is around 600 crores, approximately? Yeah, I mean, fund base and non-fund base. Non-fund base. Yeah. So we're yeah. looking to yeah. be virtually debt-free, right? Yeah, I mean... What is the current limit. borrowing rate? currently yeah. uh, if you could help us out with that number is it 10 is it 11 percent what is it no it's it's sub 10 right now okay yeah. so it's around nine nine and a half percent nine and a half percent okay yeah. so if we if we pay off all these debts yeah um, and if I say that in fact we're going to be paying roughly around 500 or 600 crores back uh, effectively that would work out to an interest saving of around 45 crores at least 45 to around 50 crores at the halfway mark your net profit that you've delivered is around 27 crores if I annualize that number, it'll be nearly around 50, 55 crores. So can we assume that interest savings of around 45 percent or 45 crores odd, that could flow into the bottom line? Uh, see, the, uh, the issue size is 600 crore, out of which 475 goes into the primary, hmm. out of which 400 crore is for the debt repayment. Okay. So uh, normally, our, uh, as per, I mean, if you see the historical numbers, we do about 42 percent in H1. Okay. So, um, looking into that, I mean, whatever the number drives into, yeah, it's, it's, it should be positive. So, yeah. just back calculating yeah. it, the 100 crore net profit is a possibility once the company pays its debt. I know you cannot give forward-looking numbers, yes. but is that a possibility? Uh, well, sure, that definitely that's a possibility on uh, that. So if, if industry goes positive, if yeah. it is moving uh, on the same speed. Uh, so and what's the upside target to that net profit, given you're operating at 50% capacity utilization? What's the plan of increasing that and... What kind of uh, uh, capex would you require, or what kind of incremental money would you require to go up to that? See, historically, if you see, uh, we've outnumbered the industrial growth. Okay. Mm -hmm. So industry has grown at a CAGR of 11.7% in last uh, five years, and we have delivered about 19% growth. 
So l looking into the same kind of a trend, I mean, uh, capacities are right now at 45% utilization. So we'll see a lot of operating leverage coming into, which increases, of course, the margin side as well as the profitability side. All right. So the half year mark, you've done around 938 crores approximately. Yeah. Last full year, you did around 1,600 crores. Yeah. So this year, you're on track to do roughly around 2,000 crores, if I just annualize that number. But uh, you must be having a plan in mind, right? If you're doing only 45% capacity utilization levels, yeah. by FY20, what should your top line number look like? You must be having some internal targets. If you could give our audience a very rough range of what you're looking at. So uh, basically, if you see, I mean, uh, as I told you that we have al al always in outnumbered the industrial growth, yeah. and particularly the segment where we are in air conditioners and refrigerator and washing machine, they are the lowest penetrated category in the consumer durable hmm. space. Air conditioners is just four percent penetrated market right yeah. now, you yeah. know, and it's huge potential to grow. And we feel that because of power adequacy, because of replacement cycles shortening up, because of the desire of comfort living moving up, you know, this segment is going to grow. And uh, if industry grows by 15, 20 percent, uh, we should be outnumbering that growth. So, so, so I would yeah. work with a number of around, you know, by FY20, we have uh, two fiscals more, 2,000 crores. And if I just take a annualized 20 percent growth approximately, we should be at roughly around 2,800 to around uh, 3,000 crores. Very, very approximate uh, uh, numbers. I mean, if industry grows, uh, that is subjective term because we, we are, our story is function of industry growth. Hmm. If industry grows, grows at that level, yes, that should be a possibility. It's a function of industry growth, that point is fairly yeah. well taken. Yeah. But you still have a 55% market yes. share. Yes. Incrementally going forward, if the in industry goes, of course, you will grow faster than that. Yeah. Market share, what is the, your target as far as the market share is concerned? So see, we have a three pillar strategy on the growth front you know one is that we are expanding our product portfolio second is we are expanding new customers and we are expanding geographies also so looking into all this uh, category our uh, this capacity utilization will definitely go upside uh, on, on that front so we have most of the numbers in place current capacity utilization is around 45 yeah. percent if we go according to the growth rate that you know we are hoping for then we should do roughly around 15 to 20 percent so top line should be 2500 to around 3000 crores in the next couple of years yeah. what about margin sir if you could just help us out with that final detail so we are at a, a range of a bit of margin of eight and a half to nine percent range and uh, we are working on expanding the margin as well into especially I mean we've got a very unique uh, cost of inefficiency COI and SLE 50 programs running into our plants and there are economies of scale coming up because of the dominance which we have taken you know so uh, that's that's uh, better days if you could help us out so uh, you know if you see the networking capital days uh, that has substantially reduced from 64 to 29 because okay. we have increased our creditor days mm. because of the economies of scale and uh, debtor days are uh, not increasing. Absolute number of inventory remains same, and sales is growing. Right. So that brings our net working capital days down to 29, and we are further targeting to bring in more efficiencies there. All right. Fair point yeah. there. Thank you so much. Uh, that Thank was you. the management of Amber joining us. Giving us fair details. I mean, 3,000 crore revenue by the next two fiscals, looking to improve their margins, improve their debtor days as well. 45% capacity utilization. Let's see what happens over the next two years. Thank you so much for joining in. Let's talk about a stock which is buzzing right now. Trijan Tech up 4% in trade after the company has bagged a multi-year order in Zimbabwe. Mr. R. Ganapati, the chairman and the ED of the company now joins in on the phone line to discuss details of that. Thanks a lot, Mr. Ganapati, for joining in. 6% uh, higher on the stock. Uh, the street really likes the fact that you have got this order from Zimbabwe, which came by yesterday. If you could give us a few more details, uh, the size of this order, your order book, the kind of margins that you are uh, going to enjoy on this order, and uh, what does it take uh, your order mix to, international versus India? Uh, good morning to both of you. Thanks for having Trijan over. We are savoring two back-to-back -back wins in the new year. We had a win last week, a few days ago, from IFAD in Rome, and this uh, from Zimbabwe, from uh, the African Regional Intellectual Property Organization, Rave. Uh, well, uh, both are small, modest wins, but as we always say internally, little drops of water make a mighty ocean. But with respect to Aripo, uh, this is uh, the second win that we have got from them. We have an existing one uh, going on, which is uh, uh, based on uh, a, a particular software uh, uh, and uh, 
this is uh, basically on Java platform, b b built by a Korean company called P Polite Plus. Mm. And this is a very small one. Uh, this is uh, actually in a full year. We reckon we will have only about a uh, hundred thousand dollars. So this is contract value about a hundred thousand dollars. But what excites us is not this actual win of a hundred thousand uh, dollar win with a with a very good uh, internationally acceptable uh, margin that we have. Mm. But what excites us is it, it takes our memory back to 2009, where uh, we won a similar one from WIPO, World Intellectual Property Organization in Geneva. We actually began with a mere $2,000 revenue per month, and we have now scaled it to a multi-million dollar uh, revenue there with 105 resources offshore and on-site working exclusively on WIPO. So we are, we are very uh, thrilled that uh, we are expanding our business in uh, uh, Aripo, it gives us a greater visibility mm. and presence in uh, Africa. Absolutely. And as I've always said, uh, that uh, we are uh, trying to reduce our dollar dependency, if you will. Uh, yeah. Some revenues are coming strong from America, and it has been the story right. the past uh, several years, almost a decade. Yeah. And with our hot pursuit in India, of about 500 plus crores, and with a pipeline of about 220 crores, we mm. do believe that FY18 will be a good year from yeah. a top line standpoint and also FY19 uh, I consistently maintain should see the breakout year as we expand our footprint in That's India accurate. and uh, also in the neighboring countries if you will we are making some small forays there and uh, very significantly even as we speak right. uh, we are our team Absolutely. is uh, finalizing Mr. Our with, uh, the smart city space Mr. Ganapati you know sir, yeah. sir we you know uh, you're giving us uh, quite a few details but if you could give us some uh, numbers that'll be very very helpful so we remember 2009 you know, we would really remember that uh, period, uh, you know, for uh, all ID companies. But, you know, very quickly, sir, before we let you go, we want a couple of details. You were saying you're reducing your dependence on dollar-denominated revenue. I think it was 90%. It came down to 70%. What is it at? If you could help us out with that number. And it you said FY19 will be a good year, sir. FY19 could be yeah. a good year. So in terms of yeah. a top line, what would it could look like? Could it look like six, 700 crores, 800 crores? What are you seeing? Are you seeing some kind of growth? Because first half of the year was more or less, you know, a flattish year or mildly negative. Yeah. See, we do hope that, uh, see, for us, uh, see, it's the third quarter is, is always a seasonally weak quarter, but right. the heavy lifting is always in the fourth quarter. So when we close FY18, we would be uh, running, uh, uh, achieving our uh, budget for FY18. And uh, we do hope that we will close. Uh, we closed, if, I, if you recall, FY17 at about $101 million. And uh, at the present run rate uh, and with the pipe, uh, with the orders that we will be executing in the last quarter, we are pretty hopeful that we will close about $120 million or so. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, thanks a lot, Mr. Ganpati, for joining in and giving us all those details. But uh, just keep your eye out on the screen. Just a few minutes ago, while we were in conversation with Mr. Ganapati, there was some news coming in from the finance minister or the finance ministry, which said the remaining 15,000 crores would, uh, borrowing would be reduced from a notified borrowing program. Remember, earlier this morning, we got the news that the government's borrowing could reduce from 50,000 crores to 20,000 crores. And uh, now we're getting the breakup of where the 30,000 crores will be saved from. The first one, 15,000 crores will be reduced from notified borrowing program. And the second one was the government did not accept borrowings of 15,000 crores in the last three auctions. So last three auctions saving you 15,000 crores and the remaining would be reduced from the future borrowing program. That accounts for the 30,000 crore saving that we're expecting in the government's borrowing. Okay, keep an eye out on the Nifty. We have recovered from the low point of the day, but Bharati Infratel, it comes out with its set of numbers today. That stock suddenly has slipped. It's moved virtually to the low point of the day. Even Bharati Airtel is looking a little nervous. And you add to the list something like a Z Entertainment. Remember, Z as well as Bharati Infratel, they both come out with their set of numbers. But the action's really in the broader markets. Manglam was talking about coffee. Even I'm with him on coffee. Both of us are teetotalers. But in fact, we're looking at United Beauties. That stock, just take a look at the intraday chart. That stock spikes to the high point of the day. And the other one is Godavari Powder and Ispat. It's made you big money. This morning it was down close to around 4 5%. It's recovered all those losses. Results on the weekend, we're keeping an eye out on that stock. But uh, on that note, we'll wrap up on Chartbusters. You stay with us because trading R comes up next.